So this kid went for air and abduction, failed, and needed to be manually reduced, and then went to the ICU afterwards, which sort of doesn't surprise you when you look at that image. And there's this sort of like um, uh, challenge in your mind because you look at that and you're like, I know that and I'm thinking about physics and I'm thinking about basic common sense that in something that big and that awful looking that the idea of just squirting some air or some fluid or whatever your reduction method is to, to reduce it just seems like it just won't work. Like it just doesn't seem like something that you can imagine working. But oddly enough, the, the literature hasn't really kind of, I'd say meaningfully caught up to proving that point, even though it seems very logical. And, and if you ask any radiologist, you know, they certainly would contend that this is probably something that um, just on basic appearance looks like something that's going to be a challenge. Um, so then we start thinking about what are these predictors of a failed reduction and can ultrasound somehow help with that? Well, we know that in older kids, and typically what that means is it's a correlation with more often having lead, po lead points that, that create um, exceptions, that they're higher, higher risk failed reductions. We know that in patients with a delayed presentation, that they're more likely to fail reduction. But then some of the proposed ultrasound things will be, you know, they talk about the lead points um, for sure, whether there's a presence of free fluid, the, the size, the length, and the lack of blood flow within the interception. Probably the one that actually has the most evidence behind it is length. So in uh, a study from just, I think, two or three years ago, they basically showed that if the interception was going all the way down to the rectum, it was about a 25% chance of being reduced versus something that's just at the ascending column, which is usually something around like a 95% chance. So um, length may well turn out to be the biggest one. It's a bit harder to tell from the step standpoint of when you're looking, like where is it exactly? Like telling if it's just in the transverse or descending or rectum. You know, you don't always get to see the bladder on top of the interception like that to give you a really clear sense of where it is. Um, but suffice to say that those might be areas where um, there could be some uh, next level research to kind of prove uh, where and when we can predict these ones not, not reducing. Um, so quick take home points. Um, the literature would be very suggestive that this is an excellent rule-in study and probably a good rule-out study, to be honest with you, um, if you've done it at least a few times. Um, record now, measure later, be nice to the kids, but remember that being nice also means being a bit mean. Um, and then the next kind of level of research probably is not to prove that how good are we at looking at this stuff anymore because that's already out there, but it's, you know, how do we integrate this into things like choosing wisely initiatives where we're trying to think about where we can avoid doing radiological studies that don't need to be done and how can we predict which patients are actually going to have a worse outcome um, when we see them at the point of care. Um, so a quick reminder to anyone who might be watching offline uh, or online, offline, online. Um, or uh, you guys who may not know about the website, P2Share, um, we have lots of videos there that talk about techniques and different skills, uh, so feel free to check it out.